If you cannot tell from this intro where I'm sitting at my desk and using my webcam, um, this is editing Jessica here who has edited this entire video and realized that she does not have an intro. So that's what we're here for. friends, I'm Jess. Welcome to the Hex Library, where I post reading, writing book, and planner-related content a couple of times a week. Today we're here for Library Explorer episode three. If you have not been here for episodes one and two, basically my goal for the year was to, well technically to go to the library every month and spend some more time at the library and get some things accomplished. Um, actually use my library to find new books to read. I do use my library. I use like the Libby app and things like that digitally, but I prior to this year hadn't actually stood foot inside my library in probably a decade. I wanted to better use the library and all of the access that I have to it because I do have an amazing library system where I live. And so I decided to do these library explorer episodes. Originally we were intended to do one a month, that's clearly not happened because this is July and we're getting episode three, but it, you know what? It's fine. So um, if you want to see the first two episodes of Library Explorer, they'll be linked down below. Um, you can see episode one, where is the first time I've been in my library in a decade. Um, today, there's not a lot of clips from the library itself, and I kind of explain that as we get into it. But today's video is... Uh, the decision to go and look for books from the early... 2000s to 2010, either werewolf or vampire, like paranormal romances. I had a couple picked out and I looked them up online to see if my library had them. They did not. So I went ahead and had those sent to my library. I go in, I pick them up, and then I take a look around to see if I can find something else um, that kind of fits with that vein. The thing about my library is they do a really good job of having like newer books, but they don't necessarily have the backlist of a lot of the longer series that have been out for a long period of time. But luckily, because I have such a large library system, within a few days, I can pretty much have about any book that I want. That was what I did. It was a fantastic time. We'll get to that and then we'll be back and you can see how the rest of the uh, experiment went. This round, there was not a lot of video taken in the library. I went after work, so it was fairly busy. Also, as I'm in there looking at books, trying to see if there was something else that I could pick up to go with the books that I was picking up for, um, that I had on hold, um, I went upstairs and was looking in the fantasy section to see if there was something else that I thought like was from that era that would go with it. Ugh, this is this is me talking in circles. Uh, <laughs> the books I had on hold were Moon Called, by Patricia Briggs and Magic Bites by Alana Andrews. As we discussed, I think Magic Bites was the one that was recommended to me by Lynn, and then um, Moon Called was recommended um, by somebody during a live stream a week and a half ago. And then the J.R. Ward ones were also recommended, but I was not able to find one that I could get to the library on hold. I also haven't been able to find one in any of like my apps my phone either ebook or audiobook that I don't have to pay for um and since I'm not sure how I feel about this genre overall I'm not really going to um, purchase that yet but once I have read these two I may tack that on at the end um just depending on how I feel about the two of these two books also I I feel like those are mm, 
the covers lead me to believe that those are a very different kind of story than these are. But I don't know, because again, I don't, I don't know. But anywho, I was upstairs looking for something that was like from the same time period as these. I think I found something that also could work, but it's not necessarily from the same time period. It just had like a similar vibe to the story, which was, I took a picture of it. That was Fighting Bad by Chloe Neal. Um, a Chicagoland vampire novel, but it was not the first book in the series. And they didn't have the first book in the series at my library, so I need to look up what the first book in that series is and see if I can get my, ha my hands on it. Um, anywho, I was there and I was looking at these and I was like looking for another book and um, just with all the people there and then uh, some older lady stopped me and started asking me about my legs and like I don't want to talk to people about medical conditions in a public space. And so I just like said the most polite answers I could say and then got the heck out of Dodge and just went and checked out my books and left because I, it's just rude and I don't want to talk about it. So, anywho, uh, we're going to read, I'm going to read you the back of these. So Magic Bites says, when the magic is up, rogue mages cast their spells and monsters appear while guns refuse to fire and cars fail to start. But then technology returns and the magic recedes as unprecedented as unpredictably as it arose, leaving all kinds of paranormal problems in its wake. Kate Daniels is a down-on-her-luck mercenary who makes her living cleaning up these magical problems, but when Kate's guardian has murdered her quest for justice, draws her into a power struggle between two strong factions within Atlanta's magic circles. The Masters of the Dead, necromancers who can control vampires, and the Pack, a paramilitary clan of shape-changers, Blame each other for a series of bizarre killings and the death of Kate's guardian may be part of the same mystery. Pressured by both sides to find the killer, Kate realizes she's way out of her league, but she won't have it any other way. Okay. And then the moon called. Marcy Thompson's sexy next door neighbor is a werewolf. I mean, why not? She's tinkering with a VW bus at her mechanic shop that happens to belong to a vampire. But then Mercy Thompson is not exactly normal herself, and her connection to the world of things that go bump in the night is about to get her into a whole lot of trouble. So, um, I have these on audiobook. I will probably switch between audiobook and physical book, as we've discussed with my library um, adventures. Um, I do struggle with um, getting migraines from reading. And that is especially true with mass market paperbacks. Um, but the whole point is of this is for me to utilize the library more and to um, find things that I probably wouldn't have found other ways. So I, I am enjoying going into the, the library and finding books that I haven't found before or didn't know about previously. This one wasn't necessarily the same kind of deal, but um, it's still showing you guys how you can utilize your library more. So that's kind of a key point. Um, but I have audiobooks of these I will probably swap between the two um, I'll probably start out physically and then just if my eyes are bothering me switch over to the audiobook also I can't like annotate these so there's not really any part to point to immersion reading them and I will probably be working on my planner uh, while I do these most especially my setup for the amazing readathon so that's what I'm doing tonight while I'm sprinting and doing this so I think I'm going to start with Magic Bites since that was the first one that was recommended to me and I will give you an update once I am at about chapter 3 since chapter 3 is 47 pages in. That feels right. Okay, I am reading Magic Bites by Laura Andrews. We're going to ignore the fact that I look like hell because I'm getting ready for work. I just got to chapter 3 which is where I said I would update you so we're gonna do that. I'm not having a good time. Uh, I'm, I'm not enjoying it. I have a vague idea of what's actually going on. Um, I grasp the concept that like she gets a call and her guardian who apparently her parents must have died and then she had a guardian who is now also dead and she is assigned to or she volunteers to figure out who killed him. I think there's been like 50 new words terminology that I have no fucking clue what anything means. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I have no clue. Anything, nothing is explained. It's just like the most info dumpy bullshit bananas that I've ever heard. Um, so much info with no explanation and it's just like all these different like types of magic and people and hierarchies and I have no clue what the fuck is happening. 
and it's incredibly vulgar for no reason. Like, someone had a vision and just like randomly in her vision she's talking about there's a guy who's masturbating to the right. To the right is important, I guess. Um, and someone said that he was going to fuck her up the ass with her weapon. I just... vulgarity. I'm, I'm not... I'm not big on the vulgarity, so... It's not necessary. <laughs> Especially not at 7 o'clock in the morning. So, I'm not, uh, again, not having the best time. I, I may like it more as I go on, but it's definitely not gonna be a five-star book, that's for sure. So, I'm gonna keep reading until at least the 50% mark, which I think I'm at like 17%. Um, because it is like a newer genre. It is the first book in a series, so. And I know lots of people who really like this book that I have things in common with, so. I have like favorite books in common with, so that theoretically, I thought I would enjoy it a lot more than I am, but yeah, we'll give it to 50% and then decide how we feel. So I'll probably give you an update um, when I get home from work today. Because that's probably when I'll be at 50% because I have to go to work. So, yay. Okay, I did make it to 50% of Magic Bites by Lana Andrews and I am DNFing that. Um, I made it to, yeah, 51%. I actually stopped mid-sentence because I was listening to it on audio and I was like, am I at 50% yet? And I was like, oh, I'm at 51%. And I just stopped it where it was and moved on with my life. So let's talk about this book and why I'm choosing to DNF it. Okay, so this was written in, well, the copyright for the mass market edition was 2007, but I don't see an earlier copyright than that, but I'm going to guess it was based off of that, the earliest. 2005 so probably 2007 but somewhere's around so there either way I've talked to a couple people who have read this and they said you know that later um, books were better but I just it's like kind of like I, I don't want to get into a long series with the idea of I have to read three or four books before I get to something that is enjoyable so uh, I'm not because this is essentially a taste test for this genre, I'm just going to accept that this book in particular is not for me, and I'm going to try something else from the genre. Um, this was incredibly info dumpy, especially at the beginning. There was just a lot of talk about a lot of things in this world that made absolutely no sense. Um, so it was like info dumpy, but also in a sense that it didn't actually tell you anything that helped you figure out the story. I don't know how that makes sense, but that's where we're at with that. The dialogue was awful. All of the dialogue felt like 12 year olds writing fan fiction and they were trying to be badass. Like it felt so stilted and fake and just like, I don't know like where I was at in the book, she was talking about how she's a mercenary and so she has to pretend like a Billy badass mercenary. But it's like, as a, as a reader, I can tell that you're not, like this is not how you actually talk. And none of the people that you're talking to actually talk like that either. Like everybody is like, they're really bad acting performances or something. Like it was real bad. And it is more vulgar than I particularly like. Um, as I said this morning, there was like a thing where someone was talking about going to stick a sword up somebody's ass. I don't know. I just, that's not really my thing. Um, but yeah, it just was like super info dumpy, but I never really figured out what was going on. Like to the point of, I understand that there are vampires and werewolf shifters, something about, um, vampires, shifters, something about necromancers at one point, um, something about fae at one point, um, talking about like there was technology but then magic came in and took everything over and now we're in a society where technology is taking over again. Or is magic technology magic or magic technology? In one way or another it cycled. Um, and like I don't even really know what she does like I don't really even know what her job is other than like she's a mercenary so she kills people I don't understand any of it because she's not actually doing her normal job in the book she's doing something else where she's trying to solve the murder of her parental figure and I don't really know what his job was either because I don't feel like that was explained like this is what I'm saying like every every sentence was like 
info dumpy in the sense that like she's telling you all these things about her world but I didn't understand any of it so I mean, is it me I don't know um, but this one is a no for me I'm going to move on the other book um, that will be starting tomorrow is Moon Called by Patricia Briggs hopefully I like this one better um, but I know it's a similar similar vibe similar style so I don't know what's gonna happen but we're gonna give it a shot if you at this point in the video are watching this and you agree with me about this book and you've read this book make a guess down below if you think I'm gonna like this one or not um, also if you've read these types of books and you think there is something that is more realistic dialogue wise not necessarily as vulgar um, I don't mind vulgarity when it's I don't know maybe I do mind vulgarity <sighs> like I'm not I'm not like some prude pretty princess or anything like I don't mind um, like violence and uh, like sex drugs rock and roll whatever but like this was just particularly vulgar and maybe it feels that way because everybody was acting like so young and like they were trying to be badasses so it made the vulgarity seem extra vulgar I don't know it just was not it was not it so there's something else that is like in this same genre um, of, of type of story that you think I might like let me know what you would recommend down below as I will start reading Moon Called tomorrow morning and I'll give you an update then and let you know how I'm feeling about it. I bring to you Moon Call by Patricia Briggs aka the Mercy Thompson series. Let's talk about it. So I've been reading this all day today. Um, it's what I was reading. I started this morning when I got up, listened to it on the way to work while I was getting ready on the way to work, to and from the chiropractor a little bit after work while I was waiting for book club to start on the way home from book club. So I'm currently at 81%. <laughs> uh, why is this book so much better than the other book? <laughs> why? Why is this so much better than the other book? I, this is how I'm describing it. So when I was reading Magic Bites, it was like so much information and things didn't make any sense. And I felt like I was only grasping the concept of a few words every sentence and like the rest of it just sounded like garbled and it just didn't really sink into my brain whereas this as I read it I'm like oh I got it I got it I got this sentence this all makes sense all of these words make sense all of this world building makes sense it like to the point that when I was 20% into this book I was like was the last book I read in Spanish like it, I don't know I don't know um, how you guys learned you know like your second languages in school but like for us I learned enough Spanish that like I can kind of follow a sentence if they're talking slow enough because let's be honest Spanish speakers tend to speak a lot faster than English speakers so I if, if I'm if they're speaking slow enough I can follow the sentence and I have a grasp of the basis of where we're going but I have no clue what's actually happening and that is how I felt about that book whereas I got to this and I was like oh this one's in a language that I understand excellent and I don't feel like I don't feel like Magic Bites was like written like in a scholarly manner or like an educational manner because that's kind of how I feel when I read those kind of books as well sometimes if I'm reading something where I'm like trying to learn a lot of the words you know don't really fit or the sentence structure doesn't really fit in a way that works in my brain I don't feel like it was written well enough to be written like that so that makes me wonder if it's just written poorly <laughs> And my brain can't function or it was trying to emulate being written really well but then missed the mark you know what i'm saying anywho um moon called having a great time love the main character mercy she's fun she's interesting she's got an interesting backstory she is a skinwalker who can transition into a coyote she was raised by her mother who was white but her father was a i am sure that they told us at some point but I do know that he is indigenous to the United States so he's a First Nations people and he I think the mom said he died a few days after she was conceived um, so she's never really met her father she was raised by um, a wolf pack like the lead wolf pack of the US in this world um, which to me is really interesting I love when authors kind of mesh 
the real world and the fantasy world together because in a lot of in a lot of indigenous cultures people like skinwalkers are a, a it's not a myth to them it's not a a story it's not it, it's just part of their religion and part of their culture it's not whereas like we would see that more as like a fantasy thing that's a real thing to them so to mix that in with an urban fantasy setting I love that it's great it's fantastic loved it um I'm sure that there will be more of that throughout the story and being completely honest I have no clue how Patricia Briggs the author identifies because I didn't look that up um so I don't know if she is the person who should be telling this story I don't know I didn't look that part up I'm just reading something from 2008 and having a good time okay I have a feeling there's gonna be a love triangle in here I mean like I said I'm like 80 percent um and I'm having a really good time I like the story I like the plot I'm following along I kind of have an idea of what's happening um there's gonna be like a love triangle but I support it like at this point I'm kind of interested to see where things go the vampires are interesting in this world they have like a pack mentality as well and they have some different things that are interesting in that world building so honestly I'm just I'm having a good time like obviously I've read 80% of this book in one day it's not even been it's been 14 hours and I've read 80% of this book and I've worked for 10 hours today so like I'm just having a good time I also because we talked about seeing how long this took and tacking another book on to the end of the week um, today I got, let me look here, because I don't remember what it's called. Um, I got Some Girls Bite by Chloe Neal, which is a part of the Chicagoland Vampires series. I think that one came out in 2010. It feels like it's going to be a similar vibe, so I'm probably going to finish Moon Called Tonight and then start that book tomorrow. I already forgot the name of it. Uh, <laughs> start that book tomorrow and see um, how I feel about that. That's another one that was like in that 2005 to 2012 era um, where it's got you know like 10 plus books in the series, uh, urban fantasy, adult, in the same vein of uh, the last two books we've read because I again I'm still waiting on my J.R. Ward book. Um, so that's where I'm at. I got back from book club. I'm ready to finish this book, eat some dinner. I left at you. Oh, when I'm done. I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea what we've talked about, what we haven't at this point, because I have done so many live streams since I started these books. <sighs> okay. The last clip that I remember was me talking about being almost done with Moon Called. I finished Moon Called. I gave this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I really liked our main character, um, Mercy. I liked the world building. Um, I do think that there could have been some better work done with like differentiating between some of the male characters specifically um but I did really enjoy it I liked the pacing and the world building especially and I liked Mercy so um I'm liking like the love triangle that we got to towards the end of the book I'm interested to see how that goes further on into the series so this is one that I definitely plan to continue reading on with okay I also from the library because we talked about trying to get the J.R. Ward one or um, the first one in the Chicagoland Vampires. I did end up getting the first one in Chicagoland Vampires which is um, Some Girls Bite by Chloe Neal. So I did end up getting that one. I did finish that one also and I gave that a 3.25 out of 5 stars. What I like about the Chicagoland Vampires was that our main character whose name I remembered five minutes ago but I don't remember now, Merritt, who <laughs> uh, she is the quintessential like we're getting into this world because of someone who is just getting into the world so we learn more about it because we learn about it with her so it's easier to get into um I know that that's more popular in like YA but I do enjoy that I like being able to figure out the world as this like with the character as the story's going rather than being thrown into everything like I felt like we were in Magic Bites so I enjoyed that part of it. I do feel like in all of these books the female main character is a little bit of a Mary Sue character. They all are like overpowered or have like more power than the other people or are they more special than other people or why do they always have like the three most dominant men in a statewide area vying for their attention. Like I, I get it okay. Um, there's definitely and some choices that are made in that aspect but it definitely is a product of the genre so it's not really that big of a deal.
but yeah, I did like it. I think that the pacing was good. I do specifically in this one feel like the male characters were very similar and kind of hard to tell apart. I felt like there were definitely parts where I was like, I don't know who this dude is or I don't know what this dude's purpose is or, you know, like they were kind of overlapping with each other. So um, it wasn't my favorite book, obviously, because I gave it a 3.25, um, but it was in the middle of this vlog for me. And of the three, well, obviously I'm not going to continue Magic Bites because why would I? I didn't have the first book. Um, but of looking at Moon Called and looking at Chicago Land, um, right now, I think I would pick up the next book in Chicago Land before I would pick up the next book in the Mercy Thompson series. But that may just be because that's like the most frequent, frequent one in my brain that'll probably change after I start reading a couple of books um, for the Amazing Readathon and I get some other books in my brain that will probably change. But um, right now, that's like what I want to pick up. So overall, I think this experiment worked out pretty well as far as like looking into books from this time period. I do know that I did read um, Written and Read by Anne Bishop earlier as well um, a couple years ago that I didn't I hadn't even thought about but it is in a similar vein. It's like adult urban fantasy with a female main character um, and it is shifters as well and that I think I gave like a three star um, again, the main character, very Mary Sue. Um, and that was like my biggest complaint with that series or that book in particular. But from what I know from other books that I've read, typically the first book in a series is not always the best. And if the first book in the series is the best, it kind of goes down from there. I'm willing to give the second book of Chicago Land Vampires a chance and also the Mercy Thompson book a chance. I may even, if I decide to go into that world I may even pick up the second book in the written in red series by Anne Bishop now that I'm like getting more of the tropes of the genre I feel like I might like that book uh better as well maybe I don't know but it's kind of where I'm at like I like the way that we you know these books were recommended to me and I was looking for something that was more like of this vibe so I'm I'm happy with what I read or you know what I didn't read in the case of uh, Magic Bites but I like where I'm at and I like that we were able to find a new genre for me to dive into um, especially since these are older series so I can find them fairly easily at the library and I can just enjoy and read. I want to thank you all again for joining me on this adventure with the Library Explorer edition of these videos. I'm having a really good time uh, going to the library even though this time I didn't get to spend as much time at the library as I would have liked. It's fine. That is all I have for today. If you made it this far in the video leave me a wolf or a moon emoji down below so they know that you're here. If you don't want to miss anything in the future make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. Until then I will see you guys next time. Bye!